In the last video, we looked at basic quick check properties, where we were trying to ascertain whether some um, part of a function or some part of a function's behavior behaves in the way that we would expect. And we use quick check to randomly generate about 100 test cases to try and falsify that and uh, let us know if it passes all or if it fails. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at doing some more of um, this uh, quick check testing. We're going to have a couple of functions here, my fun one and my fun two. We're going to act as though we don't know what these functions do, deci decipher what they do, and then write some properties for them. So let's have a look at what we've got. So my fun one has quite a simple type. It looks like we've got a character, a string, and a string. So it looks like we're going to be modifying a string in some way based on a character. And we've got a base case here, so we're looping through it, or we're cursing through it, and what we're saying is if x is equal to c, we recurse, otherwise we cons x onto the front. So it looks like... Um, we're removing elements based on whether or not they're equal to a character. So let's test that out as our running hypothesis. And let's say we have a few C's, mash keys, more C's, and more C's. And there we go. We can see that we are actually, in fact, just removing characters with this string. So that's a relatively simple function. Now, how would we do that? Or how would we uh, test this? Well, one thing. That might spring to your mind is the filter function. We know that the filter function is built into the Haskell prelude. It's well understood and well behaved. So what we could do is filter for elements that are not equal to C. Because remember, filter removes elements that fail a logical condition. So if we check for not being equal to C, we'll keep all the ones that are different from C. So that's where we probably would want to start. So let's say prop one, and it's gonna need a character and it's gonna need a string. And we can say that this is gonna be filter a function that's not equal to c on x is equal to my fun one c x is. Now this is a reasonable place to start because if we know that we can check the behavior of a user defined function using uh, built in Haskell functions we know that it's going to have some reliability because filter is a well behaved function uh, we know this we understand it it's widely used so by checking it against filter then we should hopefully get some credibility for it. So let's save that, we'll reload. Oh, that should be a lowercase u. And we'll do quick check and that should be prop one. And there we go, we'll pass the 100 tests. And we would expect to in this case because we're checking a relatively simple function against a relatively simple uh, preload function. So that's uh, not so bad. Let's try and think about another test though that might um, be a bit more useful here or a bit more um, outside the box. So one thing that we could say is that if none of the elements of this string are equal to C, we shouldn't remove them. So if um, none of the element of X's are equal to C, then we should just return X's. So that's one thing we would certainly want from this function. Um, that's also going to be a subcase of this test here, but we might want to test that directly. So let's see how we would do that. Now, the difficulty here is I would want to specify this before the test. And I can, in fact, do this. Um, uh, Quick Check does allow preconditions, so you can uh, supply some logical preconditions, and it will discard cases that do not meet that. So what we want to see, say, is it's not the case that C is LM of X's. So as long as C is not in the list, then we go ahead. And that's what this double at equals arrow means. So we check some logical condition, and if uh, the, f the generated case does not meet that, it will be discarded. So then we want to say my fun one C and X's is equal to X's. So let's reload and let's do a quick check. And we want to do prop to this thing. So there we go, we've passed 100 tests and we've discarded 8 of them. So 8 of them did not meet this criteria at the start here, the other 100 did, and we passed all of them. Now this is quite a simple property of this function, but this is certainly one you would want it to have. So sometimes you will want to check simple properties like this, you don't necessarily want to check trivial properties, um, but uh, this is a reasonable one to check as long as you have this precondition here. And a similar way, you wouldn't want to check something like my fun one c of x is, is equal to my fun one c of x is. You wouldn't want to check something that trivial, but you do want to make sure that some of the uh, simple cases are held. Anyway, that's enough testing for that one. So let's have a look at the next one. And you can see here we've got a more complex type signature already. We've got a list of functions from A to B. 
an element of A and a list of Bs. So it looks like we're going to be using this element A to generate a list of Bs based on these functions. So let's look at how it's doing that. So in the case where we're out of uh, functions, then we return the empty list, that's fair enough. Otherwise, we iterate through applying f to x and recursing. So all of these are going to be generated from the same value of x. So that's a little bit tricky. So how would we think about testing this? Um, well, it might be you might think it's difficult off the top of your head. One thing we might want to check is that if we have one element list with just one function in it, then we map that over using my phone two to get a list, a single element list of a b. That should be the same as taking that f out of the list and just applying it to the value of x. So we can map over from my fun too, but we would also want that to make sure that just normal function application is held. So that would be one thing to check here. And again, this is quite a trivial check, but we'll do this one and we'll see what happens. So what we want to say is that uh, length of f's is equal to one. So let's say we decide that's a precondition we want to make. We want to only check one element list so that we only have one function to worry about. So let's say we do my fun2 f's and x. That's capitalized. And x. And since we know that this is going to be a one element list, we could use head to extract that element. Uh, we know that even though head is a partial function, it'll be fine in this instance because it'll always be a one element long list. And then what we can say is head of f's applied to x. So one way we map using our function to the list and then extract, and the other way we extract from the function and apply that to the element. So we're just making sure that function application is held and that nothing weird is happening within the function definition. Because you know, this could be something much more complicated. In this case, it's very trivial. We know that this is gonna hold. However, in a much more complicated function, you might want to make sure the function application is held as you would expect. So let's test this and see if anything goes wrong. Um, oh, that will go wrong because that's autocorrected to exits. Either that or I can't type. And let's do a quick check. And we'll do prop three. So something has gone wrong here. And that's because we made our precondition, this here, too restrictive. So because quick check is randomly generating these tests, um, it's discarded, it's eventually given up because it's had to discard a thousand different randomly generated sets of values. So we'll pass 47 of the tests but a thousand have been discarded. And if we keep running this, we'll see that we can get somewhere around 40 to 50 um, tests passed, uh, but we never really get to a point where we're passing all of these tests because too many of the ones that are generated are just thrown away. And um, as such, this is not a good test for this function. It's not an entirely insensible thing, but this precondition is too much. Another way to do this would just be to get rid of this precondition here. And we save that and reload. Uh, we'll likely see that this is still not a great uh, precondition, depending on what the randomly generated values are, but I don't imagine we'd fail this test. There you go, we'll fail because we tried to use head on an empty list. So you could uh, try and make your uh, test more general, where you do say, well, maybe not equal to one, but we want it to be greater than one so that we don't get the empty list issue. And there you go, we've passed 100 tests and only had to discard 44. So you might want to look at what your preconditions are, decide whether they're reasonable or if they're too restrictive. If they're too restrictive, you want to think of something that's sufficient, but maybe more general. And similarly, you don't want to leave it to a case where um, something is uh, going to fail and uh, cause your code to fail as a result. Now, that's one way you could do it, just to make sure that function application is held. Another way to do this, we'll see two more ways to do this. So let's do prop4, f's, and x. Now, what we can do is we can use map. Now, you might think this is a little bit tricky because how do we use map when we're uh, getting a list of functions as input rather than a list of uh, values to apply one function to? Well, what you can do is turn x into a function by using uh, the dollar operator. This is going to um, apply fun uh, going to essentially give us function application for this value. So let's see how that works. So if I do t and I do say, dollar and let's say I do five um, 
So this is now being changed. The type of this thing is now something that takes a function and returns a B. And that's because this dollar stands for function application. So it's now looking for a function from A to B so that it can return a value B. And that's what's happening here. This is being turned into something that accepts a function and then will be mapped over this list. So we can say this is equal to, and this will be my fun to lowercase n. And we'll want to do f's and x again. Let's reload, make sure we've made no mistakes. And we'll do a quick check, prop, four. And there you go, we'll pass the 100 tests again. So this is actually a fine test for this. Now there is another way you could do this, and a slightly uh, snazzier and more Haskell-y way if you wanted to make your code harder to read for other people, or at least uh, other non-Haskell coders. So what you could do is say that this is equal to app, which we'll define in a second, and we'll say my fun two f's and x and what we'll say is where app is equal to f's and we'll raise this to an applicative and here x so what's happening here is that we're using the applicative uh, type class this is uh, one of connor uh, mcbride uh, he introduced this along with um uh, Ross Bowers, and I believe his name is, and uh, Taskell is a um, and their um, paper, which I think was applicative uh, or applicative programming or something like that. Um, but that's, this is um, a, a type class in Haskell, and if we do prop five, there we go. We'll Past the hundred tests. So this is also a fine test. So what this is saying is, um, this uh, operation here, this um, uh, star in the, the angle brackets, essentially takes a structure of functions and maps that over um, a structure of the same type of element. So this is raising this x to a list, and it's going to map this list of functions over that list of um, elements. So these are two ways, or uh, three ways you could test this function. Uh, these are all reasonable, uh, so this one's probably a little bit more uh, Haskell-y, or a bit more nerdy than the other ones, but it's an absolute fine test, as is this one. This one is also a little less uh, useful, um, it's only checking one of the function applications, so it is not maybe as good as these two tests, but it would at least test some of the function for you. So that's everything for today. Um, the main takeaway is to look at your functions, think about what's happening there, think if there's any cases where you should return the same thing. For example, we saw this in the, the first video where if you have reverse, then it makes sense to check that reverse of reverse is the same as uh, the original list. Um, similar to here, where if uh, we don't have that um, the element that we're looking for is in the list, then we don't change it. You want to think of these basic cases, and then you also want to see, are there any things in the Haskell prelude that I can use? Because they are well tested, they're well known, and if my function does not have behavior that could be derived from them, then something's up. But anyway, that's everything for today. Of course, if you have any questions about any of this, please do feel free to get in touch. Thanks.